good afternoon. <laughs> and welcome to Sunday Spirituality. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing be, because um, the cat, you know which one, the cat is uh, trying very hard to get into the room to play with his mice in here. He likes it in here, and I think he's wearing his other mother out. <laughs> trying to scoot him along. So, welcome to Spirits Sunday. <laughs> and Sunday Spirituality. Oh dear, and things falling off the wall. It's very exciting around here this morning. <laughs> oh dear, well that didn't work. We'll try something new. Anyway, glad you're here. Happy Sunday. I hope it's been a fabulous week for you. I hope that um, Spirit has been creating some wonderful things in and through you and your life. Um, I hope your dreams are becoming your reality. I hope that you feel closer to Spirit today than you did yesterday, and yesterday than the day before, and that this is just an ongoing thing for you. And uh, what else do I hope? I hope that all is well with your spirit, that uh, you are excited about your life and what is going on in it and what you are doing and becoming with it all. I would want all of that for you. And, uh, and if that's not the way it's going, and some days, mm, some days are, well, just not that way, then uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how you can reconnect, how you can turn on the power, how you can improve your life and be happier and more fulfilled and more loved and loving and all of that good stuff. So there's a good agenda for today. While I'm at it, I know sometimes the uh, we come to the end of the hour so quickly and I don't have a chance to say all the little things that are in my notes to say. And of course today I don't even have my notes in front of me, so I'll probably miss stuff anyway. But what I do want to say is thank you. Thank you to, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for donating to the cause. That is much appreciated. Uh, Thank you, CAC, for all the things you do, um, a million different things that you do, and a million little, little things. That'd be a great title for a TV show, don't you think? <laughs> hmm, I wonder. Maybe a song title. We'll think about that. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm reading up. Kirk, Kirk is, Spirit really wants, and yes, Spirit really does want <laughs> Spirit's already here. The cat is not, and that's just as well. Hi, Jenny, working in the kitchen making a gumbo. Ooh, that sounds good. Good Sunday, Brenda. Happy Sunday, Laura. Your name came up this morning in a good context. Trust me. And um, let's see who else shows up this morning and joins us for our happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I like that. Kirk said, happy Sunday. Laura said, happy Sunday. Brenda said, good Sunday. Yay. So it's all of that and more because you're here and because spirit is here and the cat is in the hall. So there we go. All the things come together for good, don't they? Don't they? I think they do. Um, so what's going on in your life this week? Before I jump into my talk, I would use music. I keep thinking of songs that would be great to play and listen to together. And um, we can't do that in the context of this time together. Or if we do, I don't know how we go about that. Well, if you write your own songs. You if you write your own them. songs. Oh, yes. Write and record me, my own songs. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, I re recognize that that's a reality. I'll stick with poetry that doesn't have to be sung. Good morning, Dana. Glad you're here. How are you feeling, darling? We've missed you. 
I'm glad that you were here. And um, an MRI last week, and we've we've been praying. I've been praying. God and I have been praying. Um, let's know how you're doing, and and if all is well, and if not, what we can be praying for. Okie dokie. Please, thank you, all at once. I I love reports on, on I don't know why I do it's silly but I love reports on where you are somehow thinking of of Kirk in the living room and and Jennifer in the kitchen working on a gumbo just tickles me makes me happy life goes on we do stuff shoulders healing well good Laura good yeah I know some things just seem to take too much time don't they but as long as it's healing nicely that's the important part. You know, there will come a time when you don't remember how long it took, but that it is well. <laughs> All right. Songs and Tina and I will sing them. That's fairer and uh, more kind to all of you. You don't want me singing. You've all been in church with me. You know, you know. Thank you, Brenda. Okay, just keep me posted, Dana, would you, please? Huh? Keep me posted. And, you know, in, in lieu of knowing, let's pray for complete peace of anything that looks like pain and, um, and well-being. So that really should kind of care, cover everything. I think it's my human curiosity more than anything else that wants more details. But I can, you know, kind of push it over a little bit more if I have more clarity. So I love that. We were watching the news, watching the news the other night, and Sister Jean was, was on the news. And I, I don't know if you know about Sister Jean or not. Sister Jean is um, the clerical support system uh, for the Loyola basketball team. And she prays for them. She, she, up until pandemic time, she used to go to all the games. She was always there. Row, uh, would she would pray throughout. You could watch her praying throughout the game and getting very excited. And she's really a fan. Um, she's terrific, and she's a old. Oh, she was ninety something when we met on the news, and she's a hundred. And she finally got her vaccines and got special permission. To be, you know, they're they're playing the games now with no audience. The teams are just facing off against each other. She got special permission to be. Let the lady do what she wants to do. Um, anyway, Sister Jean, some somebody the 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 newscaster was asked, um, did she always pray for her team? She said, oh, always, always. She said, but I pray for the other team, of course. Just maybe not as hard. Which sort of brought me up, you know? Um, do we pray harder for those things that we are personally interested in? On one level, yes, we probably do. On the other level, my friends, with what we believe, you shouldn't be praying hard at all. You should be stating a truth, accepting it as a reality, and letting go. Shouldn't you? So you find yourself sweating while you're praying. Um, you may still be more Catholic than you think you are. And and that's not bad. It just may not be quite as effective. Hold on. Oh, Kirk, darling. Well, I'm glad you're 100% better since then, but let's not do that again. I'd love to see the words, Dana. Go ahead and email it to me. Oh, thank you, Brenda. 
I kind of like the new donate button too. Now I gotta tell you, it turns out I got approved for putting a donate button on uh, some time ago. I don't know exactly when, because they didn't tell me. There was no information. Um, I'm not going to complain. Um, didn't know that we could do that. So um, I found out now that, that we can. And now all I have to do is remember before we go live to hit the little designation. So um, my technical don't forget things person has put a note on my microphone that says donate button. <laughs> and you know, it worked this morning. Last Wednesday, she said, did you put the donate button on? And I went, oh, no, I forgot again. Um, so we got it this way. The sad part is if I don't do it and go live, hey, where's the donate button? I can't do anything about it. It's got to happen before we go live. So bear with me. It's a learning curve. It's another learning curve. Ah. Ooh, dark mahogany roof. How do you do that, Jen? Ooh. You watch it very carefully. You watch it very carefully. Keep stirring. Brenda, we are, I am And I'm also praying for guidance on that other matter, so. Okay, Kirk, so there shouldn't be anything more like this for another decade or so? That would be good. Well, I like a don't hate button. <laughs> I just have to talk to Facebook about that. A don't hate button. As opposed to a donate button. Donate. Buttons. You can push them both. I like that. Endless possibilities. Now that we're all kind of, Are we all kind of settled in? I am sort of settled in. Hold on. There's my kitty mug here. Several years ago, I wish I could remember which year, but I don't. Several years ago, my darling middle son, knowing his mother, gave me a gift that I treasure. I treasure. It is a um, picture of Einstein. Here I go. Here I go. Picture of Einstein. Pencil sketch of Einstein. And I love pencil sketches. Um, that says, I want to know God's thoughts. The rest are details. And I checked it out. And that is, in fact, an Einstein quote. And, and this beautiful gift sits on my on my desk and reminds me of what's important and reminds me of um, which is not a bad thing in my book at all I am a huge Albert Einstein fan or at least a huge huge Albert Einstein's mind fan um, there are those who say we fool ourselves if we quote Einstein to speak of God because he was an atheist. I don't believe that for a moment. What I do believe is that Einstein hadn't found a traditional God that he could believe in. He talked about and wrote about God way too much to be an atheist. And I want to know God's thoughts, the rest are details. That's just not atheist thinking. More apt to put him in the category of, of an agnostic theist, which suggests that he believed in a higher power, but not in any religion. Or perhaps he was a pantheist. 
and believed in the existence of God within the universe and its forces and laws, but not as a personified figure out there somewhere that demanded worship. Which is not a bad idea because it's God not outside, but deeply within everything and thereby everyone. Sound at all familiar to you? All of which may or may not give you some insight into Einstein and what he believed. But I think it should. Now, if organized religions gets to define God and what a believer has to look like and believe in, then I suppose Albert, by those standards, was an atheist. But if we allow one of the world's greatest minds a little latitude, then Albert had a whole lot to say about the infinite. That supposed atheist said, I want to know God's thoughts. The rest are details. And in pursuit of that knowledge, he spent his entire life trying to solve the mysteries that might ultimately unveil and reveal those thoughts. To find what he was looking for, Einstein looked deeply into space and as deeply into the laws that governed the known universe. We, in our spiritual quests, can take anything from this great mind, it would be this. If you want to know the thoughts of God, look around and don't limit your perspective. Look out and in. If our lives are the reflection of our thoughts and beliefs, and we are created in the image of lo and likeness of God, then it stands to spiritual reason that this world, this cosmos of ours, is a reflection of the beliefs and thoughts, the inner workings of the mind of God. So what do we see when we look? Through the telescope, we see astounding beauty, order, unlimited horizons, and intelligence. And when we look through the looking glass at the world that surrounds us, we see beauty, order, intelligence, abundance, love, Yes, love. We are cared for at the most basic and important levels. The basic needs for our survival are provided for. Food, water, air, gravity. All are plentiful. We, we do nothing to earn them. The natural beauty that surrounds us is vast, varied, and accessible to all who would open their eyes and look. Our physical bodies are nothing short of miraculous. And it doesn't take an Einstein to realize that most of our stress-produced illnesses and woes are not factory-installed, but are, in fact, the products of our own making. We have created lives that are overproduced, overstressed, overworked, and undervalued. And we are so busy trying to make enough money to live our lives that there isn't enough time to enjoy our lives. Thanks to computers and 
Wi-Fi, we can now get away from the office for a while without getting away from work at all. We stop working when we are ill, but we become ill because we are working too hard. We function in this world. We produce in this world. But I'm not very sure that we are doing much living in this world. There is a world parallel to this, I think, a spiritual world that overlaps the material one. And when we are willing to really look around, when we are willing to see with our inner eye and feel with our, with our souls, that world that we live in becomes less cut and dried. The edges between the worlds become soft, and we discover that we can as easily choose to live in one world as the other. The blending of the two worlds, the elimination or lifting of the veil provides insight and guidance and, and solution. Imagine, if you will, that just beyond the real world, the, the known world, there is a spiritual world with an unlimited wealth of creative potential, with storehouses of unreleased masterpieces, and with a higher reality and a healing power. There, there is the world of all possibility. There is the world of unlimited opportunity. There is the world of inspiration of the highest order. There, Professor Einstein, is certainly one of the places where one might encounter the thoughts of God. In a world of ways, it's been a different world since 9-11, and again a different world since COVID appeared just over a year ago. Fear, confusion, distrust, anxiety levels are mounting, aren't they? Religious wars, invasions, racist attacks, and so much of it in the name of God. Your God, our God, their God. Is there really a, a God? Is there one named deity who presides over the universe? In which case, we'd better figure out who that is and get busy placating it. Or perhaps there is a power, a presence, a force for good, pay attention, that has blessed us with this earth, this life, and set us free to explore and participate in the creation of an ever-expanding, ever-evolving paradise. So are we doing that? Are we? Why are so many people playing the very dangerous game of my God is bigger than your God? When, in fact, we all claim to believe that there is only one. And if that is so, why would that God not appear differently to each people so that they could relate to it in terms that they could understand? Just as we are different people when we are with our friends, our co-workers, our parents, our children, with acquaintances and, and strangers, just as we don different personalities at home and, and at work and in social environments, why would God not do so in order to make itself known and available to people who have been raised in different cultures with different understandings, different mores, different, different rituals? We are still the same person, though we might present ourselves differently to each group of people that we engage with. So too might not God? If there is only one, 
there is only one. I get that. Our God is not a different God from their God. How could it be? It is not. It is one. It is the same. The languaging is different. The rules and regulations that are set up around it become different. And that's where the separation begins to happen. We must find the common denominators that allow us to see through the various presentations, the varied understandings to the one, to the creation. Our friend Albert said, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. It is difficult, if not nearly impossible, to solve the problems of this world while we are immersed in them. Not only must we be aware of the higher reality, but we must step into that other world. And we must learn from it to we must learn to think from it, to act from it, to live from it, if we are to find solutions to our individual and collective challenges. So here's a new challenge for you. Well, actually, it's a question, and a relatively simple one. If the spiritual world is one of the places where we and Albert might encounter the thoughts of God, where else might we look? Where else might we come to know God's thoughts? Consider this. If we set all the labels aside, if we put deism and theism and pantheism and all the other isms on a shelf, and if we ask all the gods to take a deep breath and relax for a few minutes, I'd like you to consider that there is you. You, right there staring at your computer screen or your television screen or your telephone screen, whatever screen you may be staring at. You are created from source. You are unique. You are powerful. You are inspired. You have unlimited potential. You are created, we are told, in the image and likeness of God. And for the moment, we won't be concerned with which God. You are, after all, a work in progress, not yet complete, but definitely in development. How you progress in this process is about consciousness. A consciousness that has to be first, not second, nature. It's a consciousness of creation, not destruction. A consciousness of evolution, not devolution. A consciousness that keeps the highest good in mind and learns to overlook the flaws in development. It is the consciousness that asks, what if they gave a war and nobody came? Or what if your child, spouse, parent, coworker tried to start a fight and you just didn't show up for it? It takes practice, this consciousness, and it takes dedication. And it takes patience and perseverance, it takes commitment, and it takes discipline. The question to ask yourself in this ever-evolving growth spurt called life is, do you want to fight more than you want peace? Do you want what you are capable of becoming more than you want what you have right now? Are you willing to give up being right? Are you willing to give up what? Jesus said, leave your nets and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Are you 
willing to leave your nets. At the risk of repeating myself, which I'm going to do, but please know there is a point to all of this. You, you right there staring at whatever screen you have in front of you, you are created from source. You are unique, powerful, inspired. You have unlimited potential. You are created, we are told by those who should know, in the image and likeness of God. Okay, so at the risk of offending anyone or possibly everyone, let me define God as creation. Let us call it that rather than all those personal little names it has picked up around the world. So if God is creation, and we all seem to agree on that point, and you are created in the image and likeness of God, you are then the image and likeness of creation. Yes? Good. Okay, we are almost at the point I'm trying to get to. Hang in there. While it is really easy to imagine God creating everything, most of us have, after all, been raised on the stories in Genesis. And in that, it says, so God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Which takes care of the Adam came first, blah, blah, blah story. Genesis 127, go look it up. So here's the real question. If you are created in the image and likeness of creation, where else besides in the spiritual world might you look for the thoughts of God? One more hint. Jesus was quoting Psalm 82, 6 when he said, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So at the risk of jumping off a spiritual ledge, I'm going to take this whole thought a step farther, which involves more questions for you. No one is going to hear your answers but you, so answer honestly. And if someone else is there, just answer in your head. But answer honestly. That's what's important. Here are the questions. I'm just going to rattle them off. How many of you pray? How many of you pray to God? Where is that God? How do you make contact with him or her? And one more. How do you know if your prayer is heard? Now look, I already know that most of you pray. You've told me that. And I know that you pray to God or universe or whatever name you choose to call the infinite. So the real question here is, where is that God? Is he or she out there somewhere sitting on a throne, on a cloud? I think not. I do believe, I certainly hope, that we are beyond that thinking. But really, where is it? Where do you keep it? If you've been paying any attention, you know by now that it is within you. It is the invisible part of your DNA. Oh, it won't show up in DNA tests, but it will show up in your life. Einstein wanted to know about God's thoughts about the universe. That was his focus. So he looked to the unfolding. If you want to know God's thoughts about your life, look first to your thoughts about your life. If God, if creation is at work in your life, it is guided and directed by your thinking. 
Stop fighting it. Creation really is on your side. And it really is within you. It says yes to whatever you are thinking. So the best way to work with it is to get your thoughts moving in the right direction. If your life isn't going the way you want it to, turn your thoughts around so that when creation within you says yes, it is creating the results you desire. You don't have to go it alone. You really are never alone. Creation is where you are, always. But you have to be aware. When you have a dream, know that the greatest prayer you can pray is yes. Yes opens the floodgates. Yes, opens the doors and windows and lets the light and the possibility pour in. Yes is both the prayer and the answer. Every time you say yes to a dream or a desire, you accept what creation is offering to you through your desire. Where do you think it comes from? The root of the word desire itself is of the Father. Uh -huh. <sighs> so hear me. I don't know how. I don't know how it could happen. I shouldn't. I can't. Those are not yeses. Yes is the only yes. Yes, I will accept this. Yes. I will take this on. Yes, I will fill my life with good. Yes, yes, yes. When someone offers you a gift, you, you get it. How will it be manufactured? How will I use it? You only say yes. And then once you've got it, you learn. You do what you must do. Your desire, your of the Father to have, do, and be is the offer of a gift. It is that within you that is saying, how about this? If you want it, stop arguing with it and say, yes. The great prayer is yes. You don't have to tell God how. You, you just have to say yes and then do whatever you are guided to do or already know you should do your yes and then positive steps in that direction are the prayer the answer and the way path permission acceptance yes is the straightest point between two lines that's not right yes is the straightest line between two points but you know i'll have to think about why that came out the other way Saying yes involves more than words and thinking because you can't go against what you're thinking. You are creation expressing itself. Your thinking is creating your world. You are God's. Jesus said it, I didn't. Think it through if it doesn't seem to be working. What else could you do? What else needs to be done? What is, what is your next step? My favorite biblical passage, most of you could probably say it with me at this point, is Romans eight nineteen. The universe waits with eager longing for the children of God to be revealed. Waits. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for you to think in a new way, act in a new way, respond in a new way, waiting for you to invite, recite, excite, revisit. What do you need to do instead? What do you need to think instead? Do it. Faith and action are both relevant to your life. Your consciousness, absolutely. Yes, affirm what you desire and then say yes 
with your life. Do what you are guided to do. Do what you know you need to do. Then the magic doors open. Then, then you pass through. The magic happens while you are busy doing what you believe you need to do, while you are saying yes with your life. And then doors open that you didn't even see before. And things await beyond, far beyond your wildest imaginings. See, my point is this. You really already know God's thoughts don't you? Creation only thinks create. It only thinks yes. And creation already knows your thoughts, so you are saying yes to what you really desire. Creation is saying yes in the only way it knows how, as only creation can by responding to your creative thought, by making your thoughts reality. And may those thoughts, created in the image and the likeness of God's thoughts, creation's thoughts, may they be only yes. Now, an agnostic, by definition, is one who says, Now, traditional religion define um, God and what we have to believe about it, then I suppose they could label us as as agnostics. I said the agnostics, uh, oh God, if there is a God, save my soul if I have a soul. I learned that years ago. Um, yeah, we are our pantheists, if, if anything. Yeah, now, you know, all is creation, and so we are part of that. And um, if if we believe that God has expressed itself in and through all creation, and that all creation is made of that God stuff, then you either get to say it. I think it's deists that, that believe that, um, or theists that believe that God expressed itself through creation. And, and life, and then one of the two believes that God stepped back and just stayed uninvolved for the rest of eternity. And another believes that once it expressed itself through all of creation, there was nothing left for it to do, and so it just lives as creation. Um, we're somewhere between all of that, I think, actually. And I've listened from people who have been in religious science for decades that um, I still haven't quite settled. But you know, it's all about labels. That's all about labels. Do we care? I'm not sure I do. I mean, I suppose if you were in a... In a someone said, what are you? It would be interesting to have an answer. We may need to come up with our own. How about that? Within and all around. You're right, Brenda. So.
So, do we care about the label or do we care about the reality, the spiritual reality? But no, I wouldn't say we're agnostic. Because most of us don't do the, oh, save my soul, I have a soul. We absolutely believe that there is created the universe. The question is, Theists and panentheists, or was it left to us to figure it all out? And God's taking a long vacation. Or so expressed itself in and through everything there was that that's how it now exists. Hmm? Great minds, philosophers' minds, have, have worked on this stuff for a very long time. It's, it's interesting, Steve. All about having the argument, and who cares? I'm tired of arguing. Can we just be? Can we just? I think we can. I think we can. just be. Be creative. thinking over the weekend um, and Kirk you just kept coming to mind as I was saying the words if we can recognize how powerful we really are if we can really accept the idea that creation see I think the word God gets in the way sometimes the creation, capital C-R-E-A-T-I-O-N, not just one C, not just the first letter, the whole thing. That creation, the magnitude of creation abides within each one of us. You know, so maybe God set the world on automatic when he first created it and all this other stuff, the, the air and the gravity and all the rest of that just takes care of itself and somehow it just keeps going if we don't screw it up too badly. Look at the intelligence in the universe that has, well, nothing to do with us except that it's all part of the puzzle and the puzzle isn't complete without all of the pieces in it. But what if the very power of creation, at least in regards to your life, is right there where you are? And that all the time that we've been out there praying to God knows what. Um, the secret is to let go of that. We need to make something out there and to recognize the immeasurable power that we have within us. The power to create, to change, to transform. Hmm? Wow. I'd like you to consider who you really are. Anytime you hear that little voice going, mm, that whiny voice. I can't have the only whiny voice. Every time you hear that little whiny voice, to stop and say, why are you whining? God is where you are. Power is where. Creation is where you are. Transformation is where you are. What if? Practice it. I, now, it's probably not going to come naturally right away. It takes a while. But listen for the whine. Listen for the, mm, poor me. That's mm. why I love my hummingbirds. When I sit out in the, in, in the patio in the morning and, and do my journaling and my, and my praying and read the daily word to tipsy if I fall into a little whiny 
I swear that's when the hummingbird shows up and the hummingbird says, that's how he got his name, Tisk Tisk. Really? Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Why? And he brings me right out of it. Right out of it. Well, it's, you know, it's an exterior sound, but it helps. If we all had a little the hummingbird or an alarm. Someone once said they pictured me sitting on their shoulder, and when they heard the whiny voice, you know, my little voice would go, Really? If you want me, I'll be there. <laughs> Dina says, I whine so well. We all do. It's a lifetime of habit. Let's start a wine club. Or a non-wine club. Hmm? Answer Brenda's question, because bless her heart, she's asked it twice now. Is the donate button... So, um, someone else will have to let me know, but I... On today's CAC and CAC's looking. I don't see it, but then I get your feed, so... Oh, all right. Um, I don't see it. Listen to your hummingbird, Jennifer. Hard to, to keep a whiny thought when you've got something going tisk tisk. Wise little fellows, and I swear mine shows up when I most need to hear it. See it, please let me know it's supposed to be there. And someone said they already saw it. So. back in again um, and view it differently. You don't make it easy. I'm not. I'm not. I think in lieu of complaining, I'll pray. Shall we? So let's take a moment. Hmm? Let's take a moment. Oh, and take a breath. Gentle breath, big breath, whatever works for you, whatever you need to do right now. <sighs> know with me that all that there is is creation expressing. God by any name is that. The foundation, the founder, the architect of the universe. And we are all, each of us, part of the plan, the inheritors of the kingdom. We are that. Know ye not that they are God. Hmm. We're learning. We are becoming. Becoming gods. Already with the power, but not necessarily with the wisdom and the knowledge. But we are learning. We are becoming. And so I know for each of us that in that becoming, we are made wiser, more powerful, more whole, more loving, more creative. I know that the words that we speak together, the, the thoughts that we hold together, bless everyone, bless everyone who has asked for prayer and those that we are aware of for whom
prayer would make a difference. And I see bodies being healed now, perhaps at a faster pace than they have been. I see minds that are clear, pain that dissipates. Questions that are answered, opportunities that knock so loudly they cannot be ignored, and the courage to respond. I see bodies becoming stronger, more flexible, more, more at ease. I see minds at peace, able to think clearly, fogs lifted, if you will. I know that as simple as this all sounds, there is a realization this morning that we are, in fact, an ongoing part of creation. And our responsibility in each of our lives is to think like God, to speak our word and fully expect that that word becomes reality. We answer yes to the desires of our hearts, to the thoughts in our minds, to the reality of our dreams, yes. And I know that when we come together, there is within us a greater power. Where two or more are gathered, he said. Recreating our individual lives and recreating our universe in positive, productive, loving, working ways. And so we simply say yes, yes, yes. To the healing, to the dreams, to the building. to the founding of a great new world. Yes. And we let everything else go. Anything unlike that now disappears back into the nothingness from which it came to reform, to be recreated into a world that works in deepest gratitude. We accept that as our reality and let it be so. And so it is. prayer. How appropriate is that? Loved. They always do. Special prayer requests. And keep me updated on so we know what's going on for sure. Oh, thank you for being here. Love you all. Take care. Be safe. <sighs> be powerful.